so this is the great doctor debate. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, as I like to do on the panels that I moderate, uh, you know, I like everybody to introduce themselves. What? There he is. Here he comes. Okay. Just a minute. Not awesome. Oh, no, it's fine. I was actually listening to the first half of that. It was really good. Okay. So good. We actually didn't start yet. <laughs> okay. So like I like to do with the panels that I moderate, I have introductions. And I always start with down there. So I can have the most of the talk when it comes back out. Yeah. Exactly. But is this the debater's work? No. It's the great talk today. This is the Great Doctor Debate. That's the one I want. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So it's the Great Doctor Debate. <laughs> These are the choice. We didn't know if you were all still the. This is the panel here. <laughs> there was some confusion in the schedule. Uh, there was a confusion because someone used the wrong grid. Huh. Sent them an updated grid. Okay. Uh, but they got it right in the description. And they got it right on my badge, and that's all that yeah. matters. <laughs> See, for those of us that read both the panel and the description, we were confused. <laughs> so we'll start down there with you. All right. Uh, I am Josiah English. I'm an author. I've written well. I've written a bunch of books, but only one of them is available. Uh, and I'm also a college student. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Jennifer Hello. I know my name, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> this is audience, so you don't know your name anymore. Right? <laughs> I'm Emily Vasilis. I'm here work um, because one of, the, one of the movies I'm in is premiering here today. Uh, a Few Brains More, Summer of Blood. Um, so that, that's the reason I'm here. I'm here to act, but I love actually We'll get into this later on how I got addicted, but that's why I'm here. Moving on. <laughs> I'm Carol Coles, I'm the programming director for Con Carolinas, and I've been a Doctor Who fan for far longer than I want to admit. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody told me to betray my age. <laughs> yeah, don't date don't yourself. It's okay. <laughs> Doctor Who's <laughs> time. So well, we're not pressing you. Because I don't know how many panels I've done with you now. <laughs> we have a lot of the same interests. We do. Um, I, am, <laughs> I am David Beauchamp. Um, I am a author, librarian, podcaster, anthologist, editor. If it involves words, I've done it. Um, but what am I, and I'm a huge Shark Tank fan, always have been, and I'm currently doing a podcast, uh, a video podcast uh, that talks about Doctor Who, where we basically roundtable episodes, go to cons, record the panels, like this one's being recorded, which will be uh, podcasted. So everyone wait for the Yeah, it's back there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> And normally if there is a Doctor Who panel at a con, I am a fixture on those panels. So yeah, I think I, I think before we get into the actual heated debate of doctors and companions, uh, it's always good to know how we came into the show, how, how we first discovered it, um, and things like that. So we will start with the uh, young one on, on, on the panel, all the way down there, with the British pen. Yes. Um, I'm actually embarrassed to say I'm a recent Doctor Who convert, um, and I uh, I was house sitting just a few months ago, and they had Netflix, and Doctor Who was recommended to me. I've you know heard about it for a very long time, but never had the opportunity to watch it. As soon as I started, I was obsessed. <laughs> it's hard not to be, and so you know I watched everything that was available. Um, where'd you Where'd you start? Um, I started, that's the first season I saw was Christopher Eccleston, because um, that was the, the one that was available. Um, and then I've, I've gone back and watched as much of the old ones as I can. Okay, they're okay. not always available. Yeah. Oh, God. Easy to get. Yeah, so I'm doing that. Oh, um, I am Jennifer I had heard about Doctor Who at different, at different people's houses. Went to a convention here and there, heard people reading about it. They tried to explain the concept of the TARDIS to me, and I looked at them like they were crazy. I what? Because um, I mean, it, it's not something that's prevalently done in a lot of pop culture shows. It's not. I mean, 
in parts of it, but not all at the same time. So I went over to my friend's house and he's like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm not even giving you an option anymore. You're gonna sit down <laughs> and you're gonna watch this. And okay, fine. You know, love you, Kevin. Love you, Amber. You know. So they sat me down. They watched, they made me watch the first 15 minutes, just enough so I got hooked in the, okay, now we're gonna watch this other one with this other doctor because, <laughs> <laughs> so 15 minutes into that one, okay, now you gotta see this one over here, and, uh, and then I'm like, well, no, I just, just let me watch one plot line, and no, <laughs> then you're gonna get curious, and you're gonna go back and watch all three of them, and then it's over, you so. Oh no, and I have, and I, I love the way you did that. I actually did that to somebody else, and an hour later they were salivating over Doctor Who. So I've, I've seen all the newer episodes. Um, when I first started watching it, I tried to go back to the very first one, but the black and white kind of caught me off guard and hurt my eyes a little bit. So I watched all the newer episodes and then went back and reached the point where they, they had to colorize the still frames because the footage was lost. Yeah. And as, as much as that hurt, I loved it because it was a whole new experience. So, of, that's how I got involved with Talk to you. Um, I grew up in Denver and on KRMA, TV Denver, PBS station. They would show an entire story arc on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. And it, um, one morning I was home and I happened upon City of Death, which we were showing tomorrow in the video room. And wrote, I was hooked. Every Sunday after that, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was Doctor Who Day. Are you marking the silence? What are you doing? He's marking the number of people that walk in. No. <laughs> We're all silence. Yes. <laughs> we forget about us as soon as we <laughs> um, you You can't do that and not explain it. Oh, I can totally do it and not explain it. This is a Doctor Who Day. Have you not watched the opening? Oh, for me, the doctor. Me and the doctor. Wow, we've sorted past. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm I'm one of the few lucky people that cannot tell you what his first episode was because I've been watching it that long. Um, I grew up on Doctor Who, so I mean I knew all the doctors and all that stuff. So, I mean, I can't tell you who I first saw. Though, I mean, most likely it was either Peter Davison or Tom Baker, because that's what they were showing on PBS that I sort of remember. And if I understand the way they, pack, they did the packages back then, that was one package, the Baker and Davison stuff. Um, then you had the black and white stuff, and then they really didn't show Colin Baker where I was at, but I, I saw Sylvester. But I'm, I'm really lucky. I, I grew up on Doctor Who. I've always known Doctor Who. And, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So um, to begin the debate, we're, we're gonna we're gonna start this off with just a really really quick sort of uh, shotgun approach. Um, after seeing uh, the children being special time crash, um, I have to agree with what Moffat said. Everybody has their own doctor. Um, so we're just gonna sort of shotgun it down, and I'm curious to see who's. And don't worry, you guys will get a chance to you know join in this little conversation or debate. Um, Fist fighting is not allowed, but pillow fighting is. But there are no pillows in here, so we can't do that. Um, but who was your doctor? Who is your doctor? Um, I, I have to say it's a tough choice between Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant. Um, the main problem just is that I only ever got to see one David uh, Christopher Eccleston series, and I really wish they'd done more. But he was what introduced me, you know, to it as recently as it's been. Um, but in the end, having seen a lot of David Tennant, I also like what he did. And I like the older ones, but it wasn't what, you know, I started with. Yeah. So one for Nubu. Um, I, I think it's really hard because, I mean, from what I've seen, they're, they're all the doctor, and the way they portray the doctor is, is perfect for where the doctor is in the story arc because they, they manage, I mean, because obviously the writers don't know what's gonna happen in a year in the story, but they managed to make it seem like they knew all along. So, I, oh, um. When everybody has a doctor. Right now, I'd say between Peter Davidson and David Tennant. Wow! That's awesome. 
I mean, it, 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 and I think a lot of that was the way Peter Davidson interacted with his companions, because he, he had a completely different approach. If, if I had a cookie, you would get a cookie right now, or a gold yeah. star. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. 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 My doctor, hands down, will always be my doctor, Peter Davison. Hence the reason why you got the, the gum. Yeah, Peter Davison is by far my favorite of the doctors. Um, and before we go into the great uh, talk about teams, I'm just curious, um, what are some of your favorite doctors? And I want you all to yell it out at the exact same time, so it'll be total and utter chaos. Because if this is, you know, chaos, Doctor Who, it all goes on, goes around, goes along perfectly. So I'm on count of three, and we yell out your favorite doctor, and I'm gonna tally up. New <laughs> Who versus classic. Okay, here. ready? Okay, one, two, three. All of them. Wow, it worked! I can't believe they actually did that. I'm intelligible. I heard somebody. I heard somebody in the back of here say all of them. <laughs> Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's um, companion. Oh, or companions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I can I yeah, you start go. this one? Jump right in. I went and did my homework. I was gonna have this <laughs> presentation. <laughs> it was gonna be awesome, but alas, I got here and I didn't have time because I was going to all these panels. Honestly, one thing I've noticed is there isn't as much debate about who your favorite doctor is. It really comes down to the companion. Yeah. But there are the 50 fight. of them. Yes! <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, that's not even to the the ones that are, you know, show regulars. That that aren't companions. Or the ones that are... Are we including ones from other media, like the, the anime? Or... I mean, something like that. that finish, I mean, there's so many. I mean, that's the thing about the companions. You, you can't... Excuse me, could we define companion? What a companion is. Well, for me, it's yeah. anybody that's appeared in the opening credits. Okay, so okay. the new who. Okay, okay. Well, the new who, they didn't, I, if I can't, I don't remember, they only, they, they had, had after credits. credits. They had after credits, but yeah. No, I mean, for new who, it's whoever appears in the, cre in, in the opening credits, that's sort of how they defined it. So who's traveled in the TARDIS with yeah. the Doctor? That's, that's the way I kind of define it. See, I, I don't believe that. For at least two episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it has to be more than one episode. Yeah. yeah. Canine. Canine don't count. Canine don't count. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. E even Chameleon. But can can one include Brigadier Lethbridge oh. Stewart? Yeah, we're going to ask him that. That's great. What about Richard Milhouse next time? He has to be here. He doesn't count. That's why I said for more than one episode. Uh, no, 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 I, I, I am looking forward to it. That was a two-parter. Oh, 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 I am looking for Kansas. I know, but it was a two-parter. I can't to tell we're the third. I'm pretty sure. Technically, he's a companion. No, I know. I, I, I think he's going to become an official one. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, it's like different. Who's yours? Since you wanted to start this. No, I just I wanted to just <laughs> opinion first. I I'm gonna need to hear other people's opinions before I can wrap my mind around what we're talking about. I'm just, I'm just gonna say Rose. Uh, 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 all right. No, no. Every every no judgment. It's in this room. it no is yeah. And he's yeah. a newbie. Yeah. 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 I, even I have a soft spot in my heart for Rose. I just have to secret daughters of Paul girl, you know, I mean. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, and Matt Smith was on that one too. Yes, he was. Ooh. Yes. Um, not having seen all of the various ones over the years, yes. has any other companion been basically regulated to an alternate reality slash universe? That, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Several. Okay. Yeah. Several. Yeah. Several. Okay. <laughs> So since she needs a moment to try to get yeah. out her list. Um, actually, it's been a very bad year for my favorite uh, companions. Very dear Lethbridge Stewart, yeah. Sarah Jane. All I can say is, Jamie McCrimmon, watch your back. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, he's those are my, from his cancer. So <laughs> those are my top three. Oh, yeah. yeah, because um, lately my favorite companions have been... Yeah, I mean, oh. just, just for the nature of this panel and just for who they are, I mean... Sarah Jane and Debrita here right now have to be my two favorite companions. Um, they all, I mean, honestly, when, it, when it's all said and done, I mean, they all have a special a place in my heart. And especially now Sophie Aldred after meeting her last weekend. Absolute sweetheart. She played Ace. Um, she holds, she holds, as far as I'm concerned, the title for most badass companion because she's the only companion who ever took down a Dalek with a baseball bat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? She, she wrote on John's card. She's apparently never met it. So she wrote it. She but she knows it. We know, but she knows his sister so well. Yeah, but she's not met John. Really? Yeah. So she wrote a note in his card saying that she really wanted to meet him. I, oh, does that work? So if I actually change my mind to, please, I want to meet you. Will you give me tickets to your next show when you're in the United States? Or give me an airline ticket and I'll be more than happy to go overseas? Do you think that'll work? I think that would just be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's just write that note I wrote in the book I gave him. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, <laughs> I, I have my answer. You have your answer? Okay. It's between, okay, and this is not technically a companion, but I really enjoy Jackie Tyler. She, she you know, I, I think she actually deserved, I, I think she deserves, deserves honorary yeah. companions as because of what she did for her well, daughter, even though. She was actually in that big companion. scene um, where the series sort of ended with Matt, with uh, Tennant. Um, where they were all in the all in the TARDIS control thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, she traveled with the TARDIS. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think she. Yeah, but I think she actually deserved that credit in the opening that she never got. She's one of those that never got it that deserved it because I mean, she was such a big part of the Tenant era. She was, and I think that her her interaction with her daughter, her relationship with her daughter, and in the end, the fact that she kind of in a Jane Austen way gets everything she ever wanted. I'm. I'm well, I mean, it's let's true. Be serious. I I really enjoyed that. And then if I had to pick another one, I'd say Ian Chesterton from the very first. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. And, uh, so and from also, the very first line, we're not where we were, were we? Well, <laughs> 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 of course, yeah. I, I forgot to throw a canine because oh, I love that oh. dog. Oh. Oh. And every time they've killed him, I've been very very sad. Though of course I think Rory's died more than K9, so... Yeah. Yeah, how, many more times, how many more times <laughs> are they going to kill Rory this season? Right? Uh, like, wait, 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 he's like King. Rory's wait. dead again! Do he's we like want King. spoilers or not? No. No. <laughs> no. no spoilers! Especially that tonight the next episode comes out, you can't, no. No. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> because you are within reach. No, I mean I just I just screwed my head. I just looked. I have a small I have a baseball. That's bag. all it takes. I have a pair of Jack Harkins. Hello. Why well, did I know something that, that has been Jack, to me too that other people don't know I'm from this side of my because I might get a point point to know. Um Wow. Okay, so who are some of your favorite companions? And you guys don't have to shut it all at once because that was just an insane experience. <laughs> <laughs> I found the, the companions that had a 
father-daughter relationship with the doctor more common. I was going to say Joe Brandt was one of my favorites because I've always been a little uneasy about the idea of a romantic relationship between the doctor and a normal human. Joe Brandt was the perfect example of the father, her and her were the first example of the father-daughter relationship and how she left him when she fell in love and moved to start another family. It just it worked for me. Also, I don't remember the name of the actress who played Best Nessa, but she said something. Sarah Sutton. Thank you. She said something very insightful. She said the primary duty of a companion is to look and scream. And Joe Brandt was really good. <laughs> I know. I mean. And not wandering off. Exactly. She could, <laughs> she could look terrified and scream, but not be wimpy. There's a big difference. Ace was never wimpy, but you know, but she never screamed either. No, but that made that, that made Ace awesome. Yes. Yeah. Following up on the you know sort of father daughter relationship, that's one of the reasons that I love the first Doctor and Vicky's relationship actually, especially in, yeah. in the Crusades, yeah. and Stephen as well because you know he was the first person that really Jackie Tyler Donna Noble style sassed the Doctor back and questioned him. Though, I mean, I, I so love the first Sarah Jane Smith episode where she thought the doctor was the villain. And, I mean, she yeah. stood up to the doctor. I mean, that was just great. I mean, you just knew there was going to be something special there. Any other, uh, come on, other companions, favorites? Come on. Are you raising, you raising your hand? Yes. Yeah. I, um, I really like Donna. Yes. Donna is good. Donna is, you, know, you start me. out with yeah. new movies. Yeah. You have Rose. Rose is, oh my gosh, I can see why some people hate her. Um, and, then you have Mar and then you have Martha. Martha is interesting, and then you have Donna. And Donna is a very independent female character. She's not at all interested romantically in the Doctor. She, she holds her own. Yeah. To, to me, I would say that I, I did not like her in the Christmas special that, that she was in. I thought she was a little too overpowering. But to me, after that, after Partners in Crime, they sold me on her. I mean, and to me, in a lot of ways, I thought she was the modern day Sarah Jane. Mm -hmm. Just the way with the banter, you know, you know. I, I want to mate, you know. He says, I want to mate. She's, she's like, what? I mean, she's like, no, <laughs> no space. But I mean, it was the, the dynamic there was just amazing between those those two actors. They're, I mean, they're really great together. Yeah. I would love to see their nominated. stage. I would love. Yeah. To, I mean, I would love to see the stage show they're in together right now. Much Which I know I hate you guys. Much to do about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I, I actually have another friend that's going over there in a couple weeks. This is this show. I'm just yeah. It's very good. We just, we just all have to pray that David doesn't drive himself off the stage by the end of the summer because we were the, when we were in the first week of the show that had six shows and two of the shows he had driven himself partially off the stage. And the other crew had to pull him back because he's driving a golf cart. Uh -huh. So he drives the golf cart on and he gets all excited and when he goes off, he misses the ramp part of it. Uh -huh. and, so, and it's on one of these stages that revolves, so it's like off the ground. So he ends up with a wheel off with the stage. So we're like, okay, we just all have to eat. You know, but they keep him on the stage for the entire summer. So I'm going to randomly pick people in the audience so I can find out who their favorite doctor is and who their favorite companion is. I'm going to start with the person in the back. With the Doctor Who shirt? No. Yes. No. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I'll be on the spot. Okay. Well, companion wide, it'd have to be either Sarah Jane Smith or I do have a soft spot in my heart for Captain Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also because he's hot. Or a competitor. I think a little of both. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he, come he on, he's artists. on all the companion posters. He's a companion. Yeah, no, I, 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 if, if Lethbridge Stewart, who held the Doctor prisoner by the capturing the Cardiff key, is a companion, so is yeah, yeah. Jack, yeah. Uh, so is Chameleon, so is Edric. Okay, of course, Edric was a companion. No, no, Edric. Uh, who was the who who was the public school kid who tried to sabotage? The, oh, uh, Turla. Turla. Oh, yeah, he, he totally was. I mean, he he traveled with Peter Davison for quite some time. Tur Turlo, even though he started out as an idiot. Uh, uh, well, not just a kid, as a saboteur. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was great. Um, and I'm basically choosing people with Doctor Who shirts. Blue, Blue Boy, who's your favorite uh, Doctor and companion? <laughs> I'm, one of the, I'm one of those Philistines who follows it for the story, so. Uh. He likes most of them. Yeah. Yeah. But you really like the dogs. 
But you have to have a doctor. Everybody has a doctor. I'll fall back on the first one I ever saw. That works. Okay, that was that, that would be Baker. Okay. Which one? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm figuring Tom. It is. Yeah. yeah that was so, so, so much Tom, because you know his personality shifted quite a bit. Oh, yeah. I think the the er, the earlier goofball version, uh, the one who was all the time losing his hat, and <laughs> then when he comes back into the scene, it's magically reappeared. You know, I really <laughs> miss the hat. That's what they got to miss out of New Who. They haven't worn a hat until Matt Smith, and he wore the fez. And I thought it was so cool. <laughs> and I said, give it to the hat. first doctor. The stats. Yes, yeah, yeah, the yeah, stats. Yeah. The stats are cool. So are bunk beds. So, who's your favorite doctor and companion? Um, David Tennant and Catherine Tate. Ah, I, can't, I can't argue. I'm seeing who else has a doctor and sure not. <laughs> oh, you have one. One in, one in the light blue. You like all of them. Uh, <laughs> no, there's one in dark blue. Him or yeah, him? him first, then okay. I'll get to you. I think I'd have to go, uh, as I said, with uh, with Stephen. And but my favorite doctor yeah. has to be the second. Oh, thank yes. you. Yeah. There was a guy that was cosplaying him um, last weekend at Timegate. He was Dude, it was fantastic. It was I mean, he was scary. amazing. The second he was in that costume, he stayed in character the entire time. The entire time. We saw him in the parking lot outside, and, and he was going across the parking lot doing the little that, that dance. Little, yeah. That little Charlie Chaplin yeah. walk. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he was amazing. I mean, Tom Gate was so much fun last weekend. What are back? Dark blue? All of them. Okay. I love all the doctors, but uh, if you've got to pick a favorite, it's got to be the one who's playing him right now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so love right now Smith. it's Matt Smith. I love Matt Smith. I love what he's doing with it. Uh, favorite companion? Mel! Nice! Oh, no, just yeah. kidding. <laughs> it's got to be Martha for the eye candy. <laughs> Martha? Martha for the eye candy. Yeah, I thought Mar I, I thought Aggie got, got the role deal on, the, on that companion. She's such a phenomenal actress. I mean, it's kind of like how I feel about Colin Baker. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Great actor, but since Just Randy C. Hayden, yeah. Because <laughs> really she surprised. wanted to go on a different show. Yeah, that was part of the problem. She chose to do something else and had to let them in the lurch. I hate to say it, had to ride her out. Good move. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, well, it wasn't a bad move for her. I'm just saying her character got kind of written out because yeah. she went off and was doing another yeah. series and didn't have time to film. And I'm glad you said the Eleventh Doctor because I hear the most argument, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna move it to you guys because you guys are being way too quiet, um, and I don't like quiet panelists. This is good. No, <laughs> this is a debate. I mean, I want to see you know like. Well, I was gonna brief you off the pillow of Thunderdome so we can dig it out. Oh, I would have loved that. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm right. 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 Yeah. Pudding. Chocolate pudding. Doctor Who pudding wrestling gym. I'm there. Don't forget the frozen fish sticks. Okay. Yes. Okay. Frozen fish sticks and custard. Oh my God. So there's 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 actually been a lot of debate about if people actually like Matt Smith as a doctor or not. So I want I want to get your feelings for it because I know how I feel about Matt Smith. Um, no, yeah. See, maybe he's like maybe the focus, he grows on you. Like, so, like Mr. Smith. Oh, it took me a really long time to get used to his different songs. But it just, you know, it was such a shift. Um, probably because, you know, totally different writers. Um, at least somewhat, you know, in charge, took a different storyline. Um, I, I do like him, but. I'm still <coughs> unsure how much. Um, I, I agree. It was it was a pretty and it was a dramatic shift. It wasn't for me because I mean you, I, I started with Chris Pratt yeah. one season and then David Tennant did his three year reign, which he left because he said he would do it forever. I know, yeah. He didn't leave that yeah. much. I mean, I wouldn't have mind. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, not to say that Christopher Eccleston, like, I wish he'd done more, and he was phenomenal, and, but, of course, you know, by the end of Dave Tennant's first episode, I was sold. So, the, the shift to Matt Smith took me a couple episodes, but now that I've, I think River Song helped my transition to Matt Smith, and the fact that she accepts him as a doctor, 
<laughs> Allowed me. Don't. You can come in later. Oh, I'm not saying anything. What is but this? You want to. What, what is this on my face? Is my face so <laughs> strong? I'm just talking I, I You're think giving that off telepathic waves. I, I blame you. <laughs> not you. That one. That one. I oh, love not like him as the doctor, but I love him in his own way, and it's... He's grown on me. Um, I'm used to old who, so the, the whole personality switch doesn't phase me at all, because when you're going from Perp to Tom Baker, Tom Baker is oh days. my god. Peter Davison to Colin Baker, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, you're used to the whole, wow, totally different personality. I do wish he'd speak a little tiny bit slower. Yeah. Yes. Because there are times where it's like, okay, rewind. <laughs> when you so get it's not, it's not just Amy. No. No. When you get him and Amy, it's like, okay, wait, I'm used to English accents and this is really bad. So, so just a tiny bit slower, but I actually really like him as the doctor. I was not I was very, very skeptical because so I was like, oh god, 25-year-old, you know, before you know it, it's gonna be toddler doctor. Oh wow. uh, <laughs> the twelfth regeneration is gonna be a five-year-old. Yeah. Um, but He's really grown on me. So, see, for me, just because you mentioned you had you, you fell in love with Tenet by the end of his first episode, it took me a little bit longer for Tenet. Right. I saw the potential there, but it was such a Doctor Light episode for right for that Christmas, that and I just I didn't get a feel for him. And even that second episode, New New Earth, the, that one again, I was just like ah. Uh, but he finally, I mean, he I mean, I love Tenet. But for me, Matt Smith, he had me sold. In the first episode, he was in. When, I agree. When yeah, too. he's at the end, where he, when he just when he starts calling back the aliens, and Roy's yeah. like, "You did what? What?" And he's like, "Enough with this raggedy doctor, you know." And he he gets up there, and he's changing, and you know he he grills the Atroxes about Earth and being a threat, and is this and. When he asks, is, is this world protected, and you see all the enemies, and I mean, you see classic enemies in there, then you start seeing the first Doctor, yep. the yeah. second Doctor, the third, fourth, fifth, and he goes through all of them, and he walks through the tenant image, and he says, I'm the Doctor. Now run. I was, I was sold. He had me hook, line, and sinker. Uh, I, and I, honestly, I think he's been, out of the new who's, the one that has hooked me the fastest as being the Doctor. I mean, Eccleston, that Rose episode, Great way to relaunch the show, but for being such a big fan of Classic Who, it was just, I was missing something. And I, like, Eccleston grew on me, because I really think Eccleston's what you needed to relaunch the show, but you needed Tenant to, to sell it, it yeah. to, to really solidify it, get everybody into it. And then, damn, if Matt Smith isn't having one of them, I had a damn good time. <laughs> I'm question yeah. slightly related. I guess this is for you guys and you guys. What's the general consensus on River Song? You guys like her or not? Yeah. I can't talk about River Song because <laughs> like they need to quit the spoilers, and this room is clearly against me. Sitting my mind. Ask him that tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like. Well, ask me if I like Doctor Who. I'll tell you exactly what I think of River then. Okay. But I, as a character in general, I do like her, especially now that I have figured out the Rubik's cube. Okay. Well, yeah. she's Rose's daughter, and somehow she goes back in time. Oh, um, I, I pay attention. Or not. No. Or not. No. Oh, uh, that's not who River is. Oh, I took a guess with that because really? their daughter ends up doing the whole regeneration at the end of that. Side. Okay, I will say this much. Humans. And this is just my speculation. This is not spoilers. Those are two different characters. I'll tell you that right now, they're two different characters. And, I mean, has everybody, everybody seen the first episode? I'll at least say this much. The thing is, is the girl that's regenerating mm -hmm. knows about regeneration. Yeah. She yeah. isn't scared about it. And I the thing is, this. and the thing is, the, the spacesuit is the whole key to it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The spacesuit was basically the Pandorica. A Pandorica light. It was keeping her alive so she wouldn't regenerate. Space. Because the silence did not want her regenerating because they had her TARDIS. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay, is this the, uh, excuse me, what was the name of that race you had in the silence or the Cylons? Silence. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Just to, I, I have not seen any Matt Smith episodes. Yeah, no, um, oh, okay. yeah. No, that, 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 that,
hold together logically. Okay. It's insane. But yeah, no, River, River's a great character. Because right? um, you know, I, I think the best thing about River, fun. and I think they needed a character like River, we, you kept guessing, who was she? I mean, the, I mean, the, the boards were just like, is she this character? Is she that character? Is she that, you know, or is she a whole new character? I mean, it was, it was brilliant. I mean, I think that is one of Moffat's best characters that he's brought into the show um, that he did before he even was showrunner. Can I take back my favorite companion? No. Because, hey, my favorite companion now has a voice and a body, and it's the TARDIS. I know. Right? I know. I know. I I don't see her as a companion. That's his wife. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, very true. true. I mean, honestly, I mean, what are the words of, 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 of Rose? I think my favorite you line from the Rose. You can't what remember what the episode that was. was. I can't. I mean, because yeah. honestly, I want. I really hope Gaiman does not write another episode until the anniversary, when he has free reign with everything and anything he wants. Because they're already planning it. They're already planning the 50th anniversary, and. Spoilers! No, no spoilers. I mean, they've been very. Thing. We're not supposed to no, no, no. Be I mean, no, they've not actually been very, very tight lipped about what they're doing. They're just in the early stages. But knowing Moffat and his love of classic Who, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't surprise me in the least that they try to get everybody back. I mean, from companions to doctors to everything. And that's where I'd want to see another Neil Gaiman episode. Because that episode was absolutely brilliant. Because I call it Neil Gaiman's love letter to Doctor Who. Because, I mean, he touches on every single doctor in that episode in some form or fashion. I mean, you really have to watch and know your classic view, but you see it all in that episode. Yep. I have a question. Um, you mentioned a um, 25-year-old playing the doctor, yes. and we're going to end up with a toddler who, which <laughs> uh, <laughs> I enjoyed. But um, in, in my research, I, um, the, the first doctor was quoted as being eight, 800 years. And then after his first regeneration, he was 600 years old. And after that, the doctors all got yeah. well, there's a, younger. I mean, no, even even so. in um, a Colin Baker episode, he, was, he said he was in the thousands. You can understand his between. linear timeline. Yeah, but you can understand. But not. His, he doesn't have a linear time timeline. Time 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 you also got to remember oh. one thing, one key thing. One of the most important things you can think of when you're dealing with the doctor, and River Song delivered this slide. The doctor lies. lies. Yeah. <laughs> he lies like a rug. Yes. And who doesn't lie about their age? For granted with the doctor. He is, <laughs> only once has he betrayed a companion, but he does but he does lie to them and deceive them about especially about information that would tell them too much about Gallifrey and advanced technology and time. So, so this so this this popped in my head because I was watching one of the confidentials and they were talking about the companions. <laughs> And the doctor picks some very unique people, basically people that are not afraid of adventure, that are willing to go. Because he never tells them they're going to be saved, that it's just going to be a walk in the park. I mean, he's taking these people into <coughs> life and death situations time and time again, and he knows it. Sometimes several times in a 24-hour time period. Mm -hmm. So the question is, would you go if you had a chance to step Hell into yeah. that? Oh yeah. 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 Mainly yeah. because nine. If I knew it was the doctor. Yeah, I trust the doctor. I wouldn't necessarily if one of the. If it, if it was some yeah. time lord that was, because I mean, if you, if you okay, if you can change your target <laughs> to be whatever, and the master's regenerated how many freaking times? More than twelve. All right. Yes. A lion, if it could disguise itself as a kitten to make you come up to it and pet it so it could eat you, it would. Mm -hmm. So, See, I, I mean, if, if, if I was an evil time lord, I would disguise my TARDIS as a police box and go around saying I was the doctor and lie to people. Come with me. Do what I tell you. I'm the doctor. Not really, but you don't know that. I changed my face up. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be awesome on the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, personally, I've always been more afraid of the Rani than the Master, but that's, no, that's just me. Well, not, not scary, but as far as... No, I, no, but, no, what I mean is I'd be more afraid of her sneaking up on me than the Master, though the Master is pretty, it's, it's pretty scary to me. So what about you? Would I know? Wish you have. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Only and if I could visit my mother the same as Rose did. 
one has responsibilities. I yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> stay on. Screw that. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> have to. I'm traveling. Hey, yeah, I, I want to be the one where you know, he's just holding onto my shoelaces while I'm floating out outside. <laughs> <laughs> Fix my cell phone so I can make calls and text people. Well, that's all I care about. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we have one question. All right. Yeah. When we get to a next regeneration, yes. Um, is there ever a possibility that, and is is the doctor's character gender specific? Are we ever going to see a female? Uh, no. 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 We already have. I don't think it's no. This is special. Game. Game and lie. Yeah. No. That. That is. Yeah. But game and or game and the doctor lies about the whole the whole such thing because the thing you shut up. <laughs> Not you. You. <laughs> We've had this debate. The doctor cannot. There is never an instance where Time Lords can swap sexes, I am sorry. There's been like 48 years of unimproving where that has never happened. I want Penelope to be the doctor. They can make a new rule. Well, no. okay, well what what if it was something like with Donna Noble? And then, well, okay, maybe not switching bodies, switch changing sexes, what if he switched bodies with somebody? And was a girl. Would you be okay with that? That's a, that, that's fine. For like an episode. Yeah, the, not, that's that's fine. It's just that would just it just oh, I just no. as a species that just does not make sense. It just does not make sense that it worked that their entire biology will change. They've never actually said that. I mean, it's it's personality. It's oh, with the brain. But, but, but remember, regeneration is a not a natural function of our brains. It is a technology developed yeah. by Omega oh, and Ramas. And Rasamon, so they, it could also involve the, uh, the sex change. No. No. Well, no. Unless, unless the doctor no. redid the technology, because he's the last Time Lord, even though he's not. always he's one more. No. <laughs> there's, there's always another no, one because out honestly, there. Think about it. Look how much trouble the doctors cause the Time Lords. If there were Time Lords out there, do you think they would really want to interfere? No. I mean, yeah. he's been nothing but a headache to them. Just let him go off, think he's, a, he's the last one. They're, yeah, they're oh, going somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, he thinks he's the last one. one. Yeah. He's worked for the Celestial Intervention Agency for almost five years. Yeah. No. Well, they didn't know how to make him president of Gallifrey several times. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> I love that line at the end of the five doctors. That, you know, like taking it into another thing, it's over. He's like, He's like, uh, you know, he's like, no, this is how it all began. Yeah. And I like to think that is how it began. You know, they're like, we're going to make you president of Gallifrey. I get to see William Hartnell. You know, they'll be like, here are the robes. You will be president. And he's just like, no. no. <laughs> I think we're going to go over here and look at the older models for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, I have a question that I feel is kind of sort of touched on, but not really brought up. As joyous and wonderful as we all find, Doctor Who, which is why we're fans, I think some of the moments are truly heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've had to stop and walk away and take a moment for myself. And I mean, I, I love those moments, and as much as I hate them and hate losing companions and all this other stuff, I, I really want to know how everyone else in the room feels and what was their favorite worst moment, I guess. Oh. I, of the series. Well, this is real quick, a time crash. I mean, when they brought Peter Davison and Tennant together, and you know, and it was when they did from You Were My Doctor on, oh. that broke me. Oh. Uh, that broke me, and I was a little baby in no. tears. <laughs> the death of Edward. I, I personally, I mean, the heartbreaking scenes are what makes it a great show, I think. Yeah. You know, without them, it would just be fun and games, and you wouldn't have any stakes in it. Um, my uh, when, yeah. I, when Rose uh, got cut off, me being a Rose fan, that was that was my moment. Um, Which time? Well, the <laughs> time. Yeah, the, the when, time. In, at the end when she was no longer a regular. On the um, beach. Yeah, on yeah. the beach at uh, Babel Bay. That, 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 that was a great scene. Too. That was it. Was a great scene, yeah. and I felt like you know. It was really well written, but when I finished that, 
on the one hand, I knew she was in more episodes because I'd seen the number of episodes she was in on the TV. I knew that was well, an cat, but I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. I knew, you know, it would be different from then on, and I was, I had, I, I actually had to stop for a couple of days just to recover. Um, at the end of War Games, when oh. they totally erased Jamie's memory oh. of traveling with the doctor oh. and then plopped him in the middle of a battle where he was very likely killed soon mm. thereafter because the Highlanders yeah. were routed. Yeah. So it was like, no, 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 no. Jamie survived, got married, and moved to North Carolina where he was a leader in the, <laughs> in the Presbyterian rebellion against the British. <laughs> okay, well, what about Donna Nobles? That also, that, that was, was just, very, just so, I mean, so tragic. She sold it. She's, yeah. She's, oh. So what about you? What, what, what's, the, what's the scene? My favorite worst moment. Um, yeah. Uh, what about 10 regenerating into 11? I mean, that was, that was kind of a bad moment. Well, I will say that scene, where he says goodbye to everybody that was, was absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. But I was a part of the regeneration, and and there was just something about Smith when you know he just is he's just there. I mean, and just his presence. I don't know. There's just something special. There's always something special whenever they regenerate. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think the saddest part is when you don't know about who, and that first regeneration happens. <laughs> You are so <laughs> yeah. saddened and shocked by it. your favorite yeah. doctor is the only one you've known. I would have suddenly. I would have loved to have been in England doctor. when like this new generation saw the Eccleston to Tenet change because they didn't know. They didn't have Classic Who. I mean, some of them might know, but I would love to have seen some of their faces. Because honestly, sadly enough, I can't wait to have kids so I can show them the original Star Wars. So I can show them. Who? So I can just see their faces. And, 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 you, and make sure that it's the episode where you get the version where Anne shoots first. Oh, of yeah. course. <laughs> but I mean, those are, those are those moments I live for when I'm a parent, just so I can see the look on my kids' faces when they get that aha moment, that magical moment that I had when I was a kid. Yes? I think, um, unfortunately, I just asked how we felt about it. That was that was one of the reasons that I actually really liked the Matt Smith there and the change from Russell T. Davies to Stephen Moffat. So that every episode didn't end with a single tear running down the doctor's cheek. He just <laughs> lost everything again. But that said, I think for me the saddest moment actually just came in this most recent series when River realized that she had just had her last kiss. Yeah. With yeah. the doctor. Yeah. It's first. Mm. God. And uh, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> Damn it, tomorrow. <laughs> and yes. also the opening to season six was just, I was actually worried about season six because season five to me was so great and I was afraid season six was going to be a letdown and that first ten minutes just And ran. who doesn't want to see that adventure on the Orient Express getting the Egyptian goddess? Yes. Come on, Moffat, well, give me that episode. The, the was there. Heartbreaking yes. moment when the TARDIS said hello to the doctor. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> no, and also to me in that scene where she goes, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Um, most series, uh, the TV shows and books, there are moments which hardcore fans don't necessarily consider canon. Mm -hmm. Is there any of that for you guys? Because Moffat said it's all canon, it's all canon. <laughs> Mo Moffat could do no wrong to me. I mean, it's, it's things that Moffat, we have who back anyway. People mm -hmm. think it's Davies. It wasn't, it wasn't Davies that brought it back. It was mm -hmm. Moffat with the Roy Atkinson comedy special. Which, of course, I, did, I just found out like two years ago that Moffat was the one that wrote that. Because actually, um, his wife, who was a producer, was like, we want to do something for, you know, I, I can't remember if it's Trooper Lee, Right Nose, Comic Relief. And they were like, we want something. I said, why not do something Doctor Who? And it was the highest rated... Curse of the Fatal Death. Yeah, it was the highest rated uh, Comedy Relief special they ever had. And it showed to them that, you know, there was a chance they could bring this back. And then they did the, the, the web stuff. And then... They relaunched it with Davies, but it's it's all thanks to Moffat. 
I mean, I, I love that man. I want to meet that man. I would kiss that man on the lips if you would let me for bringing back my fandom. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty low bar for you, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, not only did we get, not only did Doctor Who get its fandom back, we got it back good. And it just seems to be getting better and better. Well, they said that's what they're better. trying to do every week, just make it better than the one before. I, and I the think planning that goes into and then it's such a co true collaboration yeah. of each department. It is now, uh, yeah. I would I would have to inject to your question, I would have to inject that there were two feature films uh, made with Peter Cushing. Yeah, those, yeah. those are considered yeah. canon now. Oh, okay. How yes. about the American made film? That's been yes. considered yes. canon in a long time. Yeah. That's the reason why it's a mess of the point. Yeah. So, so there, how many doctors are there now then? Eleven. Eleven. Well, actually. Yeah. Can you name yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. But if you include the American, yeah. Peter yeah. Cushing, is it eleven? No, Cushing is kind of strange about where he falls into the numbering. <laughs> that hasn't been He's exactly defined. But no, it's Robin said it's all yeah, canon. But Ada's canon. Well, Ada's canon. Ada's in the first episode. Yeah. Well, then, you know, that it. It makes me. Actually, that. I don't know if anyone listens to the Doctor Who audio plays, but you really should because they're awesome. There's, I have an urge to speak they're awesome. There's a huge section of where that's the only place you get to, to meet the Ace Doctor. Yeah. yeah. And it's got a really yeah. terrific yeah. companion yeah. named Charlie. Yeah, I've heard. But yeah. Oh, but the Doctor Who. There are 11, according to the BBC, because the Doctor Who experience has all the Doctor's costumes, and it's 1 through 11. Yeah. Yeah. So. Though, of course, you know, we, we had the Valyard, we had the Watcher, um, we've, we've had other indications that have shown that, you know, the Doctor isn't playing by, by any of rules, but, it's, uh, but his own. No, the Doctor is just as willing to, uh, to break the rules as the Master, but he does it without hurting me. I would disagree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Patrick would disagree. Yes, and the others. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna. Yeah. We're actually running out of time here. We're actually running a little bit over. Um, so actually, it's 11:52, three now. But let's. Uh, the panelists, final thoughts. 12:52. Things. Anything you want to say? Rose is the best. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> I, I think when. Not tenant last episode, the episode right before that, when he asks the dude, "Have I gone too far?" Oh man! And his fear that that one broke my heart. Yeah. That one. And well, that whole. Yeah. In, in the waters of Mars, when the woman kills herself, yeah. and he suddenly gets, the, the, the look on the look on his face is, "Oh no, I've just become an asshole." <laughs> Well, I mean, well, I mean, like he, he looks yeah, and he's like, you it's know, look of I've changed when he, he hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it kind of puts him in this position, like, yeah, he kind of plays God, but well, is it's what he's weakness. doing making a difference? Mm -hmm. I mean, we we know it is, but it sets his character in that context. Yeah. Well, the, the, if you will remember, of course, the great moment when he yells, and every and nobody dies. That, that, that one still sticks with me. It wasn't until then that they had met. I realized, you know, mass slaughter was a part of the Doctor Who history. And yeah. I watched it from the beginning. So, um, yeah. Last thoughts, just watch more movies. <laughs> <laughs> Get all your friends. Get them hooked. All new, listen to it, read books. They're, it's all good. Well, two things. I'm glad the BBC is finally realizing that there's such a fan base in America. I mean, it, it's great. And then I want to be on Doctor Who. Yes, I, 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 I would. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Kind of that. But my, my my last thing is, you know, the one but to really end this panel is Geronimo. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wish to point out. I wish to mention one thing. I just discovered a back issue of High Times magazine. Oh my God. The five TV shows that are they recommend watching while stoned. <laughs> yes. Number one. Does that surprise you at all?